Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Just about 1010 in Honolulu, 410 in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands, August 26th, 2016. And this is the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. And what a week we have seen in the marketplace. Some very, very wild swings today as Jackson Hole Symposium came to a conclusion and that long-awaited speech by Janet Yellen came out. Of course, it wasn't so much her, but statements made by Fed presidents that kind of set the market wafting and set that volatility scale to a real high number and as we look at the market closing out the week, we've got some real interesting action. Also, on today's show, I do want to bring in a new format, which is basically subscriber questions. We do get them periodically. Uh, we got a, about three of them this week, so I will attempt to cover those, as I will do at this point every Friday on the Weekend Review. First to gold. Gold all over the board today. A 324.40, 324 and a half, putting it in essence unchanged. It had a low of 321.20 and a high of 1346. A tremendous move in the market, some extreme volatility. Of course, we did have a gold trade that we were stopped out of earlier this week, and we put on a trade uh, this morning just before Janet Yellen went to make her speech. And of course, we'll cover that also all on today's daily report. Traders, no doubt an extremely wild ride, especially in the precious metals, especially in gold, with it trading today to an intraday high of about 1346. Of course, as I mentioned at uh, the beginning of the show, we actually did send out a recommendation, a buy recommendation, um, late last night for us, early in the morning for those on the East Coast, to go in and uh, buy gold. Silver's always included for those that trade silver. They can go in and enter a long position in silver, but specifically to buy gold, we bought at 1332 with stops under 1320. Now, take a look at the single candle that was created from today's action. That's this candle right here. It is by all stretch of the imagination a doji. It is pretty much a gravestone doji if we look to identify it because of the size of this upper wick and the position of the body to the high and the low in the marketplace itself. And to give you an idea of the kind of volatility we saw, I'm going to bring over a much shorter uh, time span. This would be a 30 minute time span and it's also of Comex futures, but we put the trade on just prior to uh, Yellen speaking. You can see how this market really ramped up, hit this extreme high at 46. The low that came in on this one half hour bar had this tremendous range of 46 on the top, 22 on the bottom, low at around uh, 21. Our stops are sitting at 1320. And as I said, my recommendation is to maintain our current long position, maintain our current stop. Of course, we've got some room and, and some area to make up due to the fact that we did take a loss. We incurred a loss this week when we got stopped out of the market. So traders, the first question that I want to cover today comes in from one of our subscribers, which is simply, I noticed that there was a larger contracting triangle in the December uh, 16 COMEX chart formed in which the lower price line was joined by a late June and mid-July price points, and the bottom support is currently around 1325, which is very close to current price. Do you think this triangle can withstand Yellen's impact? And so I wanted to make a comment on it. Obviously it did, but I don't think that the, if, if what you're asking about is this lower support line, which would be formed from uh, these lows here and these lows here, because this is our June, as you said, and then mid-July, you can make a case that if we simply use these two lines, of course, we would have broken through if we just fixed these lows. But if we add these lows in there, and this is the long, long-standing 
a support line here. Of course, it wasn't even, it, we didn't even come close to actually having it touched. I think that the key level that we want to really be aware of is this 1321, which is a 23% retracement. And it is a retracement um, really from the moves down at the bottom of the year to the tops that we hit at around uh, 1380. I hope that answers your question. So the next question that I did want to address uh, comes from one of our subscribers in Australia, uh, Simon G. I'll just use his last initial. Uh, Gary, in your current wave count, how can you justify that wave four overlaps wave one? And I'm assuming that we're talking about uh, this particular wave four here because, of course, on our minor count, we're at one Two, we're trying to see when we're going to finish three, so we're not even at four. If we take these lows and kind of move them over, you'll see that they do come into, and again, this is a daily chart. So on an intraday basis, the high of the day absolutely came into this wave one. And so the question is, how do I justify it? The fact of the matter is, is that I use candlesticks pretty much exclusively rather than a bar chart. And what that means is that like my a Japanese counterpart, I focus extremely on the bodies, meaning the relationship between the open and close rather than the extreme highs and lows in the market. Now, here's what I mean to say. When you look at how I draw a trend line, for example, you'll notice that on most of the occasions, I'm going to the body of the candle itself as opposed to drawing it from the tail, these extreme lows or extreme highs that come into the market. So the reason that as this market came down, we're, we're, we hit a four and then it began to move up, it seemed to be a logical place for four. And yes, it does go into the area of a intraday high, but not on a closing basis. So I hope that answers your question. As far as our current position in gold goes, recommendation, maintain your current long, maintain your current stop. Silver did have a nice finish today, closing up almost a full percentage point, 0.81 at $18.64 with a low of $18.48 and a high of $19.06 on the day. Which brings us to our final subscriber question of the week. And this comes in, it's a question about silver. And it says, just wondering if I could get Gary's thoughts on an Elliott wave count in silver. It appears to have completed wave four of five since the bottom was put in. If so, could that translate to a gold chart as well? And I pulled up a weekly chart so we can take a look at more of the broad strokes. Of course, we hit our bottom not only in gold, but in silver. Silver going below $14 back at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And really, the way I see this count is this would be our, our minor count, but one, two, three and this is where we're talking about this wave four just being completed and how that correlates to gold well a couple of things if you recall from our daily show we talked about the importance of this 61 percent retracement which comes in at around 1850 which turns out to be the lows that we did hit this week and matches up quite eloquently I do think that we could be poised for an upside bounce in the market or that final fifth wave as we look at our silver chart. Interesting day, interesting week in U.S. equities with the uh, Standard and Poor's 500 as well as the Dow Jones Industrial Average both closing lower on the day. NASDAQ closing just a touch higher. Dow Jones Industrial Average looks like it closed off about 50 points on the day at 18,395. S&P 500 off about five points or a quarter percent at 2168.50 but take a look at the wild swing within the market itself and then lastly nasdaq uh, closing slightly higher up three and a half points at 47.85 this of course is the nasdaq 100 e mini u.s dollar closing on a note of strength today up about three quarters of a percent, 95.48. The low on the day, 94.24, with a high of 95.59. We didn't close that far off the high, but what you really want to 
realize in the market is we had some extreme volatility in the dollar with the dollar under pressure prior to Yellen speaking and then really taking off after her speech and some comments made by other Fed presidents. And just to give you a real idea of what we are looking at, I've pulled up a very, very short-term chart, 120 minutes. You can see going into uh, this morning's trading session under slight pressure, coming in trading lower. But then take a look at this these two-hour bars, the kinds of spikes and moves we saw until inevitably hitting this intraday high at about 95.60 and then trading just off slightly on the day, but still closing solidly higher. No doubt a most interesting week in the markets overall uh, with today's kind of cap with Janet Yellen speaking after the conclusion of the Jackson Hole Symposium. I think the underlying thing that I take out of uh, her speech today, as well as statements made by other Fed presidents, is the word framework. And what I took out of it was that all of the different uh, people within the Federal Reserve try to really highlight the fact that we really don't want to look at a single rate hike, whether we get a rate hike in September, which might or might not be so likely. We'll probably get one this year, which might or might not happen. But what they want us to focus on is the fact that even with a rate hike this year, they're kind of takeoff or ramp, I should say, is very, very low in terms of the angle or steepness of that ramp to really ratcheting up interest rates. In other words, what they basically said is this framework will keep interest rates very low for years to come rather than looking at something where we're going to ratchet it up uh, two percentage points or 200 basis points in a single period or a single year, they're talking about a very, very slow, defined, methodical raise in interest rates and at the same time keeping them really low. And I think that that is going to be a favorable climate should that be the consensus after everyone kind of reads everything and listens and re recalls what was said today? But I think that's going to be the overlying sentiment in the market as we go into not only next week, but next month. And of course, uh, we're ending summer and going into that the last quarter of the year. I think it will be favorable not only for the precious metals, but also for U.S. equities. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you, as always, good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.